Hello everyone, this is ZG Alpaca. This video will bring my series of minimalist missions into interplanetary space. We will be sending Bill Kerman to Duna and back in 2336 kilograms. And yes, we are breaking yet another world record set by Brad Wistons, which is really exciting. His video is linked in the description. Getting into the mission, we immediately spin up the propellers after loading the craft. As the craft ascends, I want to talk about one of two design choices that made this mission possible in the first place. If you ever watched minimalist missions by other YouTubers, you would see most of them using jet engines as the bottom stage. Although jet engines have incredible efficiency, they are also extremely heavy. Specifically for Brad's Duna mission, the Panzer engine alone was 1.2 tons. Together with the air intakes, the fairing, and the fuel tank, the bottom stage weighed over 1.4 tons. That is 60% of my launch mass, so I definitely want to avoid it. In comparison, the propeller stage is less than 0.4 ton and can get us all the way up to 23 kilometers. The counter-rotating propellers consists of two small DLC rotors, each driving eight basic fins as the blades. The basic fins are angled up 20 degrees, which gives the best lift-to-drag ratio. They are also displaced far outwards so that they can move at a higher linear velocity under the same angular velocity. In terms of energy source, three solar panels provide electricity for the rotors. Near 23 kilometers, our vertical speed drops below 10 meters per second. We are not going to get any higher and the air is thin enough. So we separate the propeller stage and fire up the rocket engines. While the rocket is climbing, let's talk about another feature of the craft, which is the absence of a fairing. On one hand, it does create more drag, but the drag force in the upper atmosphere is less than 7% of the thrust, so it's not a big problem. On the other hand, getting rid of the fairing not only reduces the dry mass, but also enables us to run all engines at once and drop the unnecessary engines as the TWR increases. We are also draining fuel from the bottom tanks first and dropping them when empty. As a result, this rocket is really using an asparagus staging, although it looks like a serious staging. At 69 km altitude, Bill performs a manual staging by separating the end engine in EVA construction. He then continues to full orbit using only a single spider engine. The craft is down to 502 kg after reaching low curbing orbit. There is about 25 kg of fuel left in the first dumpling tank. We will do a 140 meters per second burn to exhaust it and drop the empty tank by EVA construction. The thrust to weight ratio of this craft is about 0.5 now. While this isn't too bad, we are still going to split the ejection burn into five shorter burns in order to maximize efficiency. The final burn puts our apoapsis right at the edge of Mons gravity well. This pulls beer into a 1 to 2 resonant orbit with the Mons. Two orbits later, the second gravity assist from the Mons then ejects beer into a 6 to 7 resonant orbit with Kerbin. One big challenge of this mission is doing complex gravity assists without any reaction wheels or RCS thrusters. The high sensitivity of gravity assists to orbital parameters requires us to do miniscale correction burns with extremely high precision. This is done by initiating a spin of the craft using engine gimbal and a tiny pulse of thrust. When the craft rotates to the desired direction, tapping time warp will stop the rotation so I can perform the maneuver. After orbiting the sun seven times, Bill encounters curbing again and performs a curbing mon assist. This ejects Bill into a 6 to 5 resonant orbit with curbing. 
Another six years later, Beer performs the last flyby of Kerbin, where he finally has enough velocity to go to Duna. The 12-year journey in empty space makes the red planet look like an oasis in Beer's eyes. He plunges into Duna's atmosphere and feels a bit warm. After error capture and several error braking passes, the craft is now in low orbit around Duna. Before the deorbit burn, we will transfer some fuel out of the lander and leave just enough fuel for the landing and takeoff. The extra fuel will stay in orbit and be retrieved later. The landing spot is the highest mountain on Duna's equator, at an altitude of 6300 meters. To minimize gravity loss, we need to start the suicide burn as late as possible while still be able to kill all the vertical speed before we hit the ground. Beer is now safely landed on the surface of Duna. He quickly stretches his leg and plants a flag. The arid planet turns out to be quite far from a paradise, so he is eager to go home. At this point, you probably have noticed that Beer doesn't have a jetpack. It might seem counterintuitive to not use a jetpack for a minimalist mission, but it is actually a huge improvement. It is the second design choice that greatly reduces the launch mass. Compared with Brad's mission which used the jetpack, our mission needs more fuel to get the Duna lander all the way to orbit. However, we saved 125 kilograms by eliminating an extra command chair, a spider engine, a decoupler, and a jetpack. The net saving is about 100 kilograms for the upper stage starting from low carbon orbit. After reaching low Duna orbit, the fuel level is pretty low, so Bill needs to find the extra fuel tank in order to go home. The process of rendezvous is mostly the same as in a normal mission. Although the lack of reaction wheels makes everything awkward, Bill manages to park his craft at about 20 meters away from the fuel tank. The true challenge comes when Bill tries to grab the tank. It turns out that EVA construction mode has a limited range of 7 meters. However, if I try to turn the craft Using engine gimbal and thrust, it will drift away and never get closer than 10 meters to the tank. The solution is to rotate the engine in EVA construction, so that the thrust vector points directly at the target. This allows Bill to go straight towards the tank without drifting in other directions when he fires the engine. As the tank flies by, Bill quickly grabs it and snaps it onto his craft. With 53 kilograms of fuel added to his craft, Bill has secured his ticket for the return trip. He restores the engine back to the correct orientation and begins to plan the route back home. We have plenty of Delta V now, so the ejection burn is pretty lazy. We have no resonant orbits or multiple flybys other than a single Ike gravity assist, which saves about 50 meters per second. Our periapsis is right at the edge of Kerbin's atmosphere. We will be doing a capture burn because our relative velocity is too fast to safely error capture, and because we have enough delta V, of course. After correcting the inclination, Bill goes through more than 20 error braking passes before finally makes it to low orbit around Kerbin. With nothing left to do except the final landing, Bill spends all remaining fuel to perform the deorbit burn. The empty tank not only protects him from overheating during re-entry, but also saves him from an impact with the runway at 170 km per hour. The perfect landing brings this mission to a close. At the end, I want to make a few comments. This mission is really enabled by the new features added to the game in the past four years, 
especially the DLC pack and the stock inventory system. It may not be completely fair to compare it with missions done in older versions of KSP. But I hope to convey the idea that sometimes a better solution might go against your intuition, and we should never stop looking for new pathways. Thanks for watching, I will see you in the next video.